Hi, my name is Daniel from bookkeepingforpainters.com and this video is how to set up your painting business in QuickBooks Online Plus. So the purpose of this video is, is really to allow you to create estimates and invoices on the go to save you time and then have your, your QuickBooks Online set up so that you can actually get some insight on how to save money and make uh, make more money in your business. So I'm going to review the key steps and setting up your QuickBooks Online Plus for your painting business. So these are the steps. First of all, you want to get QuickBooks Online Plus. And QuickBooks Online is a cloud-based solution, so you can access your records at any time, anywhere, from any device. Uh, so this is really important for painting contractors who are on the go on different job sites all the time, and they might just have a tablet or a phone with them. and and you can actually access your, your books um, from those devices. There's uh, mobile apps available. Um, and the reason why you want to get the plus version of QuickBooks Online is because it has a certain f functionality that will allow you to gain better insight into your uh, painting business's financials so you can make better decisions in your business. Um, next thing you want to do is to get a chart of accounts for your business that uh, is suited so um, what a chart of accounts is, is basically this. It's a list of accounts uh, that whenever you have a transaction in your business, um, that uh, specific accounts track that transaction. And having a, a proper a chart of accounts allows you to gain better insight because you have everything set up properly. I have a, you can actually download this if you go to the link in the description. Um, you can actually download that chart of accounts, and this chart of that chart of accounts actually has it set up for a painting contractor. Next thing is company settings. When you're QuickBooks Online, you want to change your company settings um, to ensure that you're you you have some functionality turned on in there. Um, you also want to look at creating classes, jobs, and locations, and I will uh, review that as well. And then the last thing is set up your service lines in the products and services section. Uh, your service lines are some, like maybe your painting business says exterior and interior. I'm going to go over how to, how to set that up. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in QuickBooks. I have a demo company that I'm using. So the first thing you want to do is once you get your chart of accounts, you um, want to import that data into QuickBooks and you go to the gear icon, click import data, takes you to this screen, click on accounts, and then you'll actually just upload it. And then you'll you'll have to you may um, have to map the data. The chart of accounts that I have in the link on the descri description um, should make this process pretty easy because it's suited specifically for QuickBooks Online. And you'll import the go through the process, import the chart of accounts. I've already done this, so I'm set up here. Uh, relatively simple process. The next thing you want to do is go to your company settings and turn on uh, a few items. So first thing you want to make sure is turned on is under categories. Make sure classes is turned on, and then also warn me and click this one. Warn me when a transaction isn't assigned to a class. This will help you out when you're doing your estimates uh, and. And what a class is, just to describe what that class is, um, a way you can use it is if you want to understand, you know, is your interior painting uh, more profitable or is your exterior painting more profitable? And you can create two different classes for that. Or maybe um, you want to see, you know, are the residential jobs, painting jobs that I do, more, is, is, are those more profitable or are my com commercial jobs more profitable? You can create two different classes and you can, when you pull your profit and loss reports, you can actually see uh, which one is doing, which one of your uh, classes are, is doing better in your business. So that's, that's one I would turn on and also track locations. You will, uh, if you work in a, one location you probably don't need to turn this on but maybe your painting business is in two different cities or two different towns uh, you might want to you don't have to do this but um, it might make sense for you to turn on locations as well all right 
Next thing you want to do is ensure custom transaction numbers is turned on, uh, discounts is, are, are turned on, and discounts basically when you're doing your estimate, a lot of uh, a common sales tactic is to give 10% off if the client signs the contract right when you do the estimate. Um, in order to do that, a good thing to do is turn on the discount uh, and then taking deposits. Obviously, most uh, contractors take deposits before starting work. So, all right, next thing is go to uh, expenses and track expenses and items by customer. You want to make sure this is on. This is important for job costing. So, a lot of painting contractors want to know how profitable are they on a specific job. So you'll do your estimate, the, the client accepts the estimate, you start work um, and you've budgeted in your estimate, you budgeted the hours, how much, how many gallons of paint um, that you, for that specific job. Now once you actually start executing that job and, and racking up employee hours and uh, trips to the paint store, in order to see if you actually beat the budget or you know, over the budget, um, what you want to do is something called job costing. And so that's why we want to turn on track expenses items by customer. I have a, a video that goes over how to do job costing. If you go to the link in the description, um, you can see that, um, access that video. Next thing you want to do is go to advanced and make sure copy estimates to invoices is turned on. And this basically makes it easier to invoice clients because you've usually put a lot of thought into the estimates, so you want to be able to copy that right onto the invoice. All right, those are the basic ones I'm going to hit for now. Obviously, you want to uh, either take a look at this or, or have your accountant or bookkeeper um, look at that and have that set up for your business. All right, next thing. So we set up did the company settings. Next thing we're going to want to look at is uh, the classes and the locations, um, which we turned on, if you remember, in the company settings. So I'm going to go to all lists, and you'll see now that I've turned on classes and I've turned on locations, it's showing in lists. <laughs> um, for classes, I kind of gave the example already, commercial and residential. Um, and this isn't mandatory. It depends on your business, business specifically. But if you want to see, you know, the difference in these two businesses or uh, service lines, you, you might want to set up a different class for them. All right. And then for locations, pretty straightforward as well. Maybe you work in two different cities and you want to see, you know, and maybe you have um, a sales guy in one, in one city and a sales guy in another, or a foreman, you know, a foreman and a sales guy in one city, a foreman and a sales guy in another. And you want to see, you know, who's being more efficient, who's who's making more money in those respective cities. You can uh, turn on the location tracking. All right. And and the in locations and classes, they're make these allow these are tools to allow you to to gain better insight, make to allow you to make better decisions in your business. All right. So the next thing we want to do um, is go to products and services. So the way you access products and services is under lists and products and services um, makes estimating and invoice invoicing a lot easier. Um, it makes it a bit seem a lot more seamless. And basically for a painting contractor, you want to put in your service lines into products and services. Um, and right here I have an example. So exterior painting. Now you have labor hours, you have equipment rental for like pressure washers, um, materials, mainly paint, but also uh, miscellaneous costs as well. And then you have, if you subcontract labor, um, you also have a separate one for that. <clears throat> um, so let's click on employee labor. Now, a thing to keep in mind is, so let's say that um, you have an employee that works $15, you pay him $15 an hour. Now after payroll taxes and uh, Social Security and unemployment taxes and everything like that, um, someone that makes $15 an hour is really, you're really having to pay about 
about, uh, depending on where you live and everything, but let's just, it's about um, 15%, 10 to 15%. So let's just say 1725 is what you're actually having to pay out per hour. Now this, uh, this portion right here is the markup. Um, a common metric is to mark up your um, labor and your materials about siren going by. Okay, um, is to mark up your labor and materials about uh, two and a half times. So if you divide it by 0.4, um, you'll you'll get a rate of forty-three dollars and twelve cents an hour for employee labor. And it's important to include that as your rate uh, because that's how you're going to capture your markup in your estimate. Um, which I'll review in, in further depth um, in another video about estimates. But the key thing here is to include the markup um, within within your uh, your service information here. And then you have your income account that it attaches to, um, which in this case would be services. All right, uh, let's take another one. Let's look at materials. And materials sub sub product of exterior painting. Um, now this is all the materials for the job, and I, I used forty dollars, um, which basically a lot of painting contractors try to determine how many gallons of paint is it going to take to paint this house, for example. So um, I used forty just because you want to also include all your paint, caulk, glazing drops. Um, you know, you can obviously adjust that as you need. And then the 0.4 is adding in your markup. So um, I have a rate of 100. So this would be, this is a, a technique. You don't have to do it this specific way, but so your rate of 100, if you determined that there were, um, you needed 10 gallons to paint um, this house, you would time, ten, 10 times the rate would give you $1,000. So the uh, that would actually be the amount that would be added to the estimate um, to cover materials plus your markup. And you'll see here that this is a double sided. Uh, so your the markup is is about sixty dollars, but the actual cost of the materials should be about forty, and that goes to the expense account. And these numbers might differ slightly depending on how much paint and everything costs in your, your area. So you'll, you'll need to look at that. Subcontract labor, we'll take a look at this one real quick. So it's under exterior painting once again. Um, let's just say that your subcontractor charges you $20 an hour. Um, you wanna, usually you wanna mark that up, um, which we did the point four again to get uh, a rate of $50 an hour, which goes to your income account. And then this is what you're actually paying the subcontractor. All right. And might as well just look at the equipment rental real quick. This is like if you need to rent a pressure washer. Um, and once again, it includes the markup in there. And um, it, the, you know, the pressure washer might only cost you $50. Um, $50 for a half of a day use, and that's my, my, what you pay, but you add the markup in there. All right. So that's how you set up your products and services um, to allow you to uh, make your estimates pretty easy. Um, one last thing I'll just add here. Um, if you want to add a new, so I have exterior painting, as you can see. If you wanted to add another service line, all you hit is new and go to service and then you'd actually do like interior painting and you would kind of do how I set up the exterior painting and go through those steps um, but the, ensuring that you really follow these uh, these steps to setting up your QuickBooks is really important to ensuring that you're going to be set up for success uh, make sure you take a look at the chart of accounts in the link below and watch my videos on how to estimate an invoice in QuickBooks. Thanks.